Hello, my name is Zoe Hamas Hefty and I am the program specialist for the paraeducator board. This is a video to help Washington State school districts fill out iGrants form package 918 for reimbursement for the paraeducator certificate program for school year 2019-20. The purpose of iGrants 918 is to reimburse districts for their paraeducators that complete 14 hours of training on the fundamental course of study. Districts are required to submit quarterly updates through iGrants 918 by quarter one, November 1st, 2019, quarter two, February 3rd, 2020, quarter three, May 4th, 2020, and the final quarter four by September 1st of 2020. Final claims must be submitted by Tuesday, September 1st, 2020 in order to receive reimbursement. No claims may be submitted after this date and no extensions will be provided. One of the purposes of the quarterly reports is to provide a more accurate reimbursement rate to districts since the reimbursement is an estimate until we have final numbers of paraeducators trained. A preliminary rate has been established based on the November 1st, 2019 report and will be updated in February 2020 and May 2020 with the final adjustment in September 2020. We anticipate the funding will be close to $436 per paraeducator for two days of training, so 14 hours. A paraeducator must receive both days of training in order for a district to receive reimbursement. More information on iGrants reimbursement rate updates can be found on our website. So if you go to our website, pespi.wa.gov, and go to paraeducator program about the program, there's an iGrants 918 reimbursement quarterly update. And this page will be updated in February and May with the final adjustment in September. So this is a great place to come to look after those dates to see what the estimate is. So let's get started. So on page one, this is the assurances page. Um, you need to read through all of this information very carefully and then come to the bottom, give your name, your title, the date, and then you need to check this box to signify that you have read and understand and agree with all of the assurances. And then you need to mark as complete and save. Moving on to page two, this is the report for quarter one. This is from July 1st, 2019 to October 31st, 2019. This report was due on November 1st, 2019. There are three fields that are required for each and every district to fill out on this report. So the first required field is this first question. How many paraeducators did your school district have in your employment at the beginning of the 2019-20 school year? So firstly, we are asking how many paraeducators you started the school year with. So that is how many paraeducators were employed before September 1st, 2019. This number is the amount that you are required to train. The second question that is required is how many paraeducators do you anticipate training during the 2019 school year? So secondly, we're asking for how many paraeducators you intend to train. These numbers can be different because this can, but does not have to include paraeducators hired after September 1st. Paraeducators hired after September 1st of 2019 for the 2019-20 school year can be trained this year and will be reimbursed. Otherwise, these paraeducators must be trained by September 1st, 2021. Each quarter, please review these numbers and update as appropriate. So the third thing that is required for quarter one report is question number one. How many paraeducators completed 14 hours of training on the fundamental course of study? Here we're asking how many of your paraeducators completed training during this quarter. So during this quarter would be between July 1st, 2019 and October 31st, 2019. So please note we're only looking for paraeducators that completed the full 14 hours. If zero paraeducators completed the 14 hours, mark a zero here and mark as complete and save. Do not submit. If you have a number other than zero in question number one, please continue to fill out the report questions two through nine for those paraeducators. So question two, what was the structure for providing the 14 hours of training to your paraeducators? Please note the number of hours per item for a total of 14 hours. For those paraeducators that completed training, mark what the structure was for their training. Question number three, 
Did you use the online course partially or in full? Paraeducators, what we do matters to train your paraeducators. Of the paraeducators that were trained for the required 14 hours during this quarter, how many of them used in some part the online course paraeducators what we do matters? For question number four, for face-to-face -face training, what was the average number of paraeducators to an instructor? Of the paraeducators that were trained during this quarter, for the 14 hours, what was the average class size? So for example, 30 paraeducators to one instructor. Question number five, how did you handle makeups to the training? So if you have done most of your training and most of your paraeducators are trained, you can go ahead and answer this question. So if paraeducators missed some of the trainings, how did you make up those trainings? Question number six, what units from the fundamental course of study did you provide training on? So please select all of the units that you offered to your paraeducators to complete training on. Question number seven, what units from the fundamental course of study did your paraeducators complete training on? So please select all of the units that your paraeducators completed training on. Question number eight, who provided training to your paraeducators? Select all who trained your paraeducators. If filling out a partner in the other section, please be descriptive. Um, don't just give us a name, please tell us who that person is and their relation to your district. And the final question, question number nine, did paraeducators complete training beyond the 14 hours of required training and towards any of the following components of the paraeducator certificate program? Of the paraeducators that trained on the required 14 hours, did these paraeducators complete additional training on any of the listed? And please select all that apply. So after you finish quarter one report, please save and mark as completed, do not submit the report. For the following three quarters, please continue to fill out questions one through nine. For each quarter, please only complete the page for those paraeducators that completed the 14 hours of training between the outlined dates. If you did not have any paraeducators that completed training during the quarter, please still log in and mark a zero in this question one. If you do mark a zero, again, do not fill out the following questions. If you did have paraeducators complete 14 hours of training, you can go ahead and answer these questions for that number in question one, as we outlined. Regardless, if you put a zero or a number greater than zero, please mark as complete and save each quarter. So again, quarter two is due February 3rd, 2020. Quarter three is due on May 4th, 2020. And again, same thing, zero or a number here. If there's a number greater than zero, fill out two through nine. Regardless of the number in question one, please mark as complete and save. And then on page five is quarter four report due on September 1st, 2020. So this is the final quarter report. Please use the same guidelines to fill out this quarter's report. Put the number that completed training during this outlined time. There's an added section at the bottom of page five. So this is the summary section. You should see highlighted in yellow here, the final number of paraeducators who completed 14 hours of training. This number auto populates from all of the other pages. So this number is a total of all of your question ones. If this number is incorrect, you need to go back to your previous quarter reports and update the numbers as this number does auto populate and you can't change it here. So this should be the number that you expect to receive reimbursement for. If this is correct, please again, mark as complete, save and submit. If you haven't marked as complete or saved all of your other pages, it will not let you submit. So that's why you need to make sure that you have marked complete and saved all of your other pages. You need to review the form package as submission is final and make sure that all of your data is correct. You must submit by September 1st, 2020 in order to receive reimbursement. The submission is final. No extensions will be provided, so please double check your reports. If you have any questions, you can email me. My email is right here, and this is also my number. Thank you.